I think, you know, the four pillars of digital money that are prevalent and incredibly important um, to make such perfect money is kind of obviously transaction capacity, speed to finality, decentralization, which is where CBDCs do not come in, and low fees and a low cost to operate. So if we look at a kind of a currency comparison between fiat, CBDCs, Bitcoin, and Nano, we have, you can see kind of the, the variation of, you know, you've got centralization of fiat and CBDCs on Bitcoin and Nano, obviously being cryptocurrencies, decentralization is absolutely key. Um, you can see here that you, there is a point saying NC4 and NC11 on Bitcoin and Nano, and I will go into this in further detail, but this is the Nakamoto coefficient, which is a, um, a measure of decentralization. How many different entities would it take to take over um, the power of the network? Um, we obviously have variations in inflation across the board here as well, with fiat and CBDC inflation being incredibly variable as we're seeing across the world um, right now. Um, I think inflation in the US is up to 7.2% and here in the UK, we're nearly reaching 4.2 and plus. And this is only going to kind of increase as we move through kind of these very, very trying times um, for the world. Bitcoin, obviously a 1.79% and in increasing inflation. Um, and Nano is a deflationary currency. So the full extent of Nano has been distributed out into the world. No more nano will ever be printed. And I will get onto this in further detail as we move through um, this lecture. Again, an important aspect is fees. And you can see the variation across these um, kind of different um, aspects. So obviously with fiat, we have our FX and bank rates, which can be variable depending on, uh, on where you are and, uh, and what you're trying to do. CBDCs, obviously the fees are low. However, Low can be free and low can, the next step from that is no fees. Nano has no fees in its network. So a big question when it comes to perfect money is what about volatility? This is the hottest kind of topic when it comes to cryptocurrencies and how actually cryptocurrencies could move forward to really empower kind of the global um, kind of economic freedom of the world. So I think it's really prevalent to say that this is just the beginning of digital money. We are, and I say this so often, we are in the embryonic stages in my mind of this new world and, and what we can do with technology when it comes to global financial markets. The next kind of, I think this is kind of, of such an important point is that the large swings in supply due to monetary policy, as we were saying earlier in the US with 40% of all dollars haven't been printed or large swings in demand due to low market cap will thus be more volatile. And that is for cryptocurrencies and fiat alike. This is, volatility is not just an issue that cryptocurrencies face. Fiat currencies are incredibly volatile too. Um, with Nano, Nano has a fixed supply. So therefore volatility due to supply is non-existent, leaving only the need for stable demand from widespread usage. So we are working towards a larger and, and a far kind of bigger growth of adoption and with adoption and usage for Nano becomes less, well, it basically um, create less volatility across the network with steady volumes going through. Mm -hmm.